Hi, it's Mayor. And although I miss being with you in person, I'm glad to have this opportunity to share with you in this way. I decided to come to you from my living room so you can see that I really am all about what I talk about. You can see all the musical things around me, and these are the things I use for when I'm writing songs and doing research. It's all behind me, the books, the props, the musical instruments. Today's topic is tapping those tiny toes, and it's about music for our youngest children, the ones that are not quite walking and talking yet. And what I'd like to do is get started with a song that gets us moving, because you know that's what I'm all about. Our brains do not learn unless we move. So I'm going to ask you all to stand up, and I'm going to tell you that I can see through the screen, and I, I can tell if you're standing up or not. All right, so you know you learn better by doing. So you can choose just to sit and watch, but if you get up and really interact, you're going to get a lot more benefits out of this workshop. So everybody ready for Shake It, Shake It? Here we go. Just shake. Just shake it, shake it. That's right. We'll shake it, shake it. First, we're going to shake everything. Shake it, shake it, shake what you got. Shake it, shake it, shake it a lot. Shake it, Are y'all shake, shake it with me? It feels good to get shake moving. It, it, All right, let's listen. What do we shake? Shake your hands. Solamente manos, just shake our hands. Your hands shake them with this me. is hard for a two year old. Shake it, shake move it, only shake one part of our body. Shake high, shake, shake, it, shake it, low. Shake What's high. next? Shake your head, one, your two, head. three. Su cabeza. Shake your Can you shake head, it, shake it up and down? Me. Can you shake, shake, shake it side to side? Shake your head. All right, let's listen. Shake what's behind what's you. What's behind one, you? What's behind, what's behind you? you. Get shake it moving. Can you keep everything else still shake and just get that moving? That's a little challenging, shake but if you practice, it, you can do it. Your, body. your whole body. Oh. Shake, your body. Shake, your body. shake your legs. Shake, it shake your arms. Shake, shake, shake your shoulders. Shake it. Shake How about your chin? You've got. Can shake you shake your ears? I can't. Some people can. Shake it off. Now you can shake it all the way down. All the way down until you are seated. That was a lot of fun. And it's a really good song to do with the toddlers um, because they're learning body parts. They're learning to control their body. They're learning to pay attention, to listen to the song so they know what to do. But a really important thing that when we talk about this with teachers, we're always talking about the vocabulary and the listening. Well, I'm going to give you a health component to that. When you shake, you're activating your lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system is what cleans out your body, gets rid of the toxins. So if we shake body parts, we're helping our body to stay healthy. Now, all of these uh, brain facts are on my Brain Fact page on Facebook. So I invite all of you to please, if you haven't already, uh, go to the Music with Mayor Brain Facts page on Facebook, and you can see some of these Brain Facts. And please feel free to share them. That's why I make them. I make them to be shared. Now, everyone does know, well, I shouldn't take that for granted, but I think a lot of early child people know who Mr. Froggy is. Can you say hi? He says hi. He's always happy to be at the conferences. Well, Mr. Froggy has a song, and I'm not going to play the whole song now because I want to spend time on some new things I have for you. However, I think we do need to go over Mr. Froggy, and this is how his song goes. Mr. Froggy came out one day, said, hi, everybody watching, would you like to play? Everyone sings back, hi, Frog, how do you do? Yes, I'd like to play with you. And Froggy goes, yippee. And I used to tell the children to kiss him, and they would kiss on the forehead. And we, you know, used to sometimes do high five, but, you know, we're learning that... We don't want to share that space, do we? 
So here's what we do now. We're just going to do gentle baby bumps. And then when we go like this, that's sign language for yay. So baby bump and then yay. And that's how we congratulate ourselves for singing with Mr. Froggy. I'm going to sit him back down over here while I talk about him a little bit more. Um, while I'm doing Mr. Froggy, I'm doing a little bit of signing as well. The um, Yes, I like to play. When you use signing with infants and toddlers, it helps them to acquire language more easily because they are hearing it and seeing it. And then they have to try to do the motion, and that gets more parts of the brain involved. And studies have shown that babies that are exposed to sign language actually have larger vocabularies by a couple of hundred words as compared to babies that are not exposed to sign language. Another thing is the singing back. When a child can sing back and follow a melody, it is related to phonemic awareness. Now, we know that um, one-year-olds might not quite be able to sing back to the frog yet, and definitely not the infants. However, hearing the song, being exposed to it, gets the melody in their head, and eventually they're going to be able to sing it. So you want to keep interacting with babies with things like the Mr. Froggy. Um, I had a new recording come out called Mini Marister Pieces, and it's just all teeny tiny songs for this age group. Very simple songs. Now, at this age, their attention spans are very minimal. A one-year-old can focus for one minute, a two for two minutes, a three-year-old for three. And infants, it's even just like very quick. So you want to interact with them a lot and often. I would like to uh, call your attention to maybe going to my YouTube channel, Music with Mary YouTube, and listen to the interview that I did with Dr. Alice Honig about infants and the importance of using music with them. Dr. Honig calls babies delicious. And she talks about all little things that you could be doing and why you should be doing them. It's a really great interview, and I was honored to have her agree to do it with me. Um, babies also take more repetitions to learn something. So um, children need 1,200 times. Many of you have heard me say this before, but it's why a baby will say, what that? And you say, that's a tree. What that? It's a tree. What that? It's a tree. What that? It's a tree! You know, and eventually the baby's going to go, that a tree, and you're going to be like, hallelujah, right? So they do not get bored hearing the same thing over and over again. We build vocabulary by talking with them. So I'm going to ask you all to get your hands ready, and maybe a few other things like a Let's listen and find out what it is we're going to do with the baby. Get your hands ready. Here we go. Playing with baby's hands is very important because it stimulates language. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands, clap your hands, clap hands one, two, three. Tap your toe, tap oh, you can't your see, toe, I'm tapping. tap your toe with me. Tap your toe, tap your toe, tap toes one, two, three. Click your tongue. Click your tongue, click your tongue with me. Click your tongue, click your tongue, click tongues one, two, three. Clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands with me. Clap your hands, clap your hands. Clap hands one, two, three. Clap hands one, two, three. Now, sometimes 
when adults are using music for infants or toddlers, or they're writing music for infants or toddlers, they think, oh, this sounds too simple. Oh, you know, that's not something that would hold their attention. They're babies. It does hold their attention. And that's why these songs are so simple. But you will see the enjoyment on their faces. When you move their hands, you're activating all the muscles in the hands and the fingers. You're getting that motor cortex involved. And the baby is interacting with you. When that baby sees you smiling at them and going, clap your hands, the baby's really hearing, she loves being with me. She's really enjoying this. And that is bonding. That is strengthening the frontal lobe. We're also learning exercising our tongue muscles. And the more we do things with them, we're exercising the mouth and the tongue the earlier and easier, easier it will be for them to start speaking. Here's another song just like that around the same type of um, activities because you want many, many different ways to present the same concept. Can baby make this sound? Can baby make this sound? Try this sound with me. It's fun to be silly. Ha, what else can we do? What can we do? Can baby make this sound? Can baby Pick your make tongue. this sound? Try this sound with me. It's fun to be silly. Children need to make those sounds. They need to be able to be silly, make those sounds. Um, for them, it's fun when they feel their lips vibrating, and it's really all about them starting to learn to control their mouth. At one time, I had had a parent that was upset that I was having the children go, and so I called Dr. Becky Bailey, um, who I worked with on the I Love You rituals, and she was one of my advisors when I was in my graduate studies. And I asked her about it, and I said, the parents don't want me to do it. And I quote Dr. Becky Bailey's wise advice to me. Tell them to get over it. She said that parents needed to learn that children have to make those sounds and worry about correcting spitting behavior further down the road, but that these sounds are integral to developing language ability. Okay, so um, another thing that babies love is the element of surprise. When I was little, I loved jack-in-the-boxes. And um, my dad would bring them to me, and I'd play with them for hours. And I thought, oh, I would wish that I had a jack-in-the-box. The kids today, you know, could get exposed to jack-in-the-boxes and bring them back, like, in the classroom and stuff and working, especially with infant toddlers. So now... I found a special one. I'm going to move a little closer so you can see what is on my box. It's frogs. Of course it's frogs. What would you expect other than frogs? Let's find out what's inside this box. Are you ready? Here we go. There is a frog in this box. Will he come out for me? I lift the lid. Will he pop out? Yes, he did. Whoopee! There he goes. Did you see that? The children love that. That what do they say? Again! That's their hungry brain wanting to see it 1199 more times so that they get the idea of what is happening. Um, there are other fun games like that that you can play with them. I was just playing peekaboo and music with mayor class this morning and it was a zoom one and the mom sent me a picture because when I was going like this the one-year-old was covering the iPad screen instead of his face um, I thought that was rather cute and the thing is they're so literal and they're learning to understand that they can control it like this but his brain was thinking he had to cover the screen in order for me to not be seen. And he was right, that was another way of doing it. All right, um, babies also 
need to be told all the time how much they are loved. If you can never tell a baby too much, how much you love them, and show it. So this is, I actually have a very long song called I Love You All the Time, um, where the mom sings it, the father sings it, and then the baby sings it. But this is the short version that is on the mini Mary pieces because this is the version that fits this attention span. So I'm going to pretend Mr. Froggy is my baby. I pretend that a lot. And we're going to sing, I love you all the time. Baby, oh, baby. Sorry about that. It went to the wrong song. That happens sometimes, right? And we just go, oops, and move on. So here we go. I love you. I, I love, love every little thing. Part of you. Every part of you. I love your little belly. I love your little ears. I love you all the time. And put a, a kiss right here. And, of course, the baby's going to want to play that a couple of times because it's a baby, and he enjoyed it, and he loved getting that kiss at the end. And this can help also to teach body parts. I'm going to put a kiss right here on your nose. I'm going to put a kiss right here inside your hand. And then you can ask the baby, where would you like me to put a kiss? on your knee and then you can reverse it and have the baby give you a kiss where would you like to kiss mommy daddy grandma or your favorite teacher right okay so other ways that we help babies learn to connect with one another and show affection are by doing these kind of songs and doing things with other animals dolls um, important that we have all different shades of skin for our dolls um, so that children's brains get started earlier with acceptance of all styles of people, to hear all um, different accents by playing music in several different languages, not just the languages they're familiar to, with. Now, our brain has fight or flight. So that means if we hear something that we are not familiar with, our brain gets ready to either run away or stay and defend ourselves. The earlier we get exposed to more things, the less times our brain's going to go into fight or flight. When we see somebody that has a completely different skin color, our, if our brains have seen it before, we won't go into fight or flight. So we need to start exposing them, and the earlier the better. Now, I have a song where we interact and show our love with using our teddy bear. So get your little teddy bear and um, let your child interact with the teddy bear. Or you can even tell your child, you're my teddy bear. And let's sing this song about baby bear. What I do with the children is I have baby bear go around and greet and meet all the little children as well as placing kisses, um, tickles. Let's listen to what happens in this song called Baby Bear. Baby Bear will play with you, play with you, and play with you. What can Baby Bear do? He'll kiss you on your nose. You get a kiss on your nose. Baby Bear We'll play with you, play with you, and play, play with, with you. you. What can baby bear do? What's he gonna do? He'll tickle, tickle you, you on your tummy. <laughs> baby bear will play with you, play with you, play with you. What can baby bear do? He'll surely play with you. Again, extensions for this is to let the baby have the bear 
and let the baby make the decisions of what the bear might do. It's great to introduce these songs to children when they're infants, and then as they get older, give them ownership of the songs. In other words, they can start taking the bear and going around to other friends or just interacting with you, depending on whether you're in a small group or just one-on-one, -on -one, and letting them be the so-called teacher or leader because we want to give that to children those opportunities as much as we can for them to be the ones in charge so that when they get older, they're capable of making more decisions that are self-directed and also wise. All right, so here's another teddy bear one. This is a traditional teddy bear song that I think many of you already know, but this is uh, the version that's on the mini masterpieces. Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around. Teddy bear, teddy bear, touch the ground. Teddy bear, teddy bear, climb the stair. Teddy bear, teddy bear, brush your hair. Teddy bear, teddy bear, jump, jump up high. Woo! That's their favorite part. Teddy bear, teddy bear, wave goodbye. Say bye. Teddy bear, teddy bear, See ya. wave goodbye. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a couple of um, books that are really good for infants and toddlers. And that's because these books are made of cloth. Yeah. And I work with the company America's Play, and um, they have these books. They're old books, but I think they stand the test of time. And the children can't rip the pages. They can't hurt themselves. The books can get wet. It doesn't matter because it's cloth. And I'm going to move up a little bit closer so that you can see the book better. Um, this book is all about fruit. Um, let's see. Mm, fruit. Fruit is so good. Let's see what we have. I really think we should. A pear, mm, juicy. Some grapes, they're so sweet. An apple, red and shiny. Bananas are easy to eat. They're easy. Strawberries, they're so pretty. I love strawberries. Orange, bright and sunny. Watermelon, refreshingly yummy. Mmm, fruit. So there we're working on good food choices. We're learning the names of fruit. We're expanding vocabulary. And on this one, we're going to be talking about animals on a farm. Let's look on the happy farm. What do you see? A black and white cow. Ooh. A brown horse, yes, sirree. Can you make a horse sound? <laughs> Nay. I see a, a white, white duck. Quack, 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 quack. And a yellow cat. Here's our yellow cat. Meow. I see a spotted dog. Can you bark? Ruff, 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 ruff. I, I like, like that. that. These are fun animals. Here's a brown chicken. Clock, 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 clock. And, and a pink pig, too. What's a pig say? Wink, wink, or. <laughs> Last is a yellow bird. Chirp, chirp. He's waving at you. That's. Our happy farm. 
That's why these songs are so good for the teeny tinies. They're simple. They're introduce, introducing colors, animals, the sounds the animal makes, and they're giving them a visual as well. Plus, the baby can take the book afterwards and be able to turn the pages and go through it again and again and again. I think it's time for you to move. That's right, you know it's time for you to move. So uh, here's one to do with the babies. You get your baby in your arms, and you have fun with the baby, and you get up and move. So we are going to do the baby belly dance. Let's see. Baby, sorry, the baby dolly dance. Again, use Mr. Froggy. He, he actually is my life partner. Here we go. A dolly in my arms, I step from side to side. This is my baby dolly dance, I do it when I get a chance. This is my baby dolly dance, I do it when I get a chance. Two steps to the left, two steps to the right, two steps to the left. The right. With my dolly by my side, I take my dolly for a ride. Two steps to the left, two steps to the right. Two steps to the left, two steps to the right. Now right foot forward and back. Back, and we go like this. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Left foot forward and back. And the baby's still in the rhythm. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Right foot forward and back. We're learning right and left. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Left foot forward and back. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, stop. Hammer time. No, I'm just kidding. Now kick it out. Kick left, kick right, kick left, kick right, kick left, kick right, kick left, kick right. Put your arms Lift the baby up and turn yourself and turn around. around. It's time to start winding down. Now walk in place and keep a good pace. Feel the beat of your heart. Take it back to the start. This is my baby dolly dance. I do it when I get a chance. This is my baby dolly dance. I do it when I get a chance. There. Now we got your brains moving again. I feel good. Getting oxygen in the brain. For little guys, their heart rates... Their hearts are not as strong yet to have an elevated heart rate for too long. So always pay attention to when they're starting to look tired because you have to build up that ability to do sustained aerobic type activities. All righty. Now, how do we introduce babies to instruments? Well, we get the simple instruments. We get the shaker eggs. Um, let's see, my shaker egg fell down there, so I'm not going to try to find it. Well, yeah, it wasn't that hard. All right, there it is. This is a shaker egg. We also have something called maraquitas. Um, bring them up closer. Okay, this is like a maraca, but it's smaller. So in Spanish, when something's smaller, sometimes you add the ita. So maraca, maraquita. Well, Marquita is actually a shaker egg with a handle. I like using the shaker eggs because they have to wrap all their fingers around them and get control. Now, for the older kids, and by that I mean the three and four-year-olds, we do the um, shake, 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 shake the shaker, shake the shaker, now stop. And they have to pay attention, shake, 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 stop, shake, stop. This is even easier than that because we're talking infants and you can hold the egg, help the child hold the egg by holding the egg in the hand with them and manipulating and moving their hand to move the shaker egg. Very, very simple song with this. Shaker egg, shaker egg, how I love my shaker egg. Hey, what are we going to do? do? Put it in your right hand. In your right hand. 
Shaker A in my right hand. Shake it high. Shake it with the opposite. Shaker A in my right hand. Shake it back. Shake it fast. Shake it slow. Now put it in your left hand. Say shaker egg in my left hand. Shake it high, shake it low. Shaker egg in my left hand. Left hand. Shake it, Shake it fast. fast. Shake it slow. Now everybody shake those Just eggs. Just shake the eggs. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Very simple, as I say. Very simple. But the babies love it. And it is something that can be easily repeated. Easily. Now, what about a drum? We have different kinds of drums. We have the kind of drum Mr. Froggy is sitting on. We have a lollipop drum that is something that children can hold with the handle and tap with a mallet. Um, I am going to use the lollipop for this one. Here we go. And we're going to tap the drum. Tap your drum, tap your drum, tap your drum with me. Tap it once, tap it twice, tap it one, two, Let's three. Count. One, one, two, two three. three. Can you tap it some more? Yes! Here we go. We can! Tap your drum, tap your drum, tap your well, drum. The little kid isn't smiling me. just to be tapping the drum. Tap it once, tap it twice, tap, tap it Let's one, count to two, three. three. Ready? One, two, three. So you're getting the idea. Simple, simple, simple. Even many of you know that I, I do a lot of kazoo songs, a lot of kazoo songs. And um, one of the kazoo songs that we know all the time is, uh, I can play kazoo, um, I can play kazoo, and the, I lo um, the, oh, what's the other one where I do the, my kazoo. <laughs> and they have to do things like uh, imitate me, like if I go, they have to repeat that. Not really appropriate for infant or even the little toddlers, the ones, the early twos. So we have a special song just for the little ones. Why would we want them having a kazoo at this early of an age? Because when they can feel the kazoo in their mouth and they can control the airflow to go out the kazoo, this is helping them learn how to control airflow to make words. So this is a very simple song called, I Can Play Kazoo. I can play kazoo. I can play kazoo. Play kazoo with me. I'll play kazoo with you. Play kazoo with me. I'll play kazoo with you. Where'd the extra sound come from? All right. Let's play a quick game here called Peekaboo. Now, at this age, they do not have um, object permanence yet. That means if you can't see it, it's not there. That's why my song, Five Fingers in My Pocket, is so popular with these children. For those of you that don't know it, um, it's the, I've got five fingers in my pocket, five fingers hidden away, five fingers in my pocket. Whack! Oh, what went away? And I keep going until there's no fingers. And when I put them back in, I go, no fingers. Should I look? And they're like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're thinking, of course they're there, and they're thinking, maybe not. So when your fingers all come back, they get so excited. Object permanence, we're helping to teach that. So that's why they get a little confused with peekaboo. And my version of peekaboo, I actually tell them what we're doing. I put my face behind my hands. 
when they hear that enough times, 1,200 times, they start to understand you haven't really gone away. Let's play peekaboo. Peekaboo, I see you. Put your face be behind your hands and peekaboo, peekaboo. You can't see me, I'm gone. Peekaboo, I see you. Put your face be behind your hands and peekaboo, peekaboo. Did I get you? I know I got a few of you. I saw some of you jump. I know you did. I know you did. Okay. I think we have time for two more. Um, sorry to have my back to you there, but you know, it's the same thing as a live workshop. There are times when my back is turned because I have to grab a prop or work the iPod, right? Um, same thing here. Now, this is a song about feelings. We know a lot about mirror neurons now. And mirror neurons are when you look at someone's face and you see it and you make the same face back. There's a lot of times when somebody will come up to you and they're scowling and you can almost feel your face want to make that same expression. But as we get older, we learn to control that and we, we start to realize what that person must be feeling, or at least have a good idea of what emotion they are experiencing at that moment. Well, this song called Feeling Faces, again, these puppets are also from America's Educational Play. I, uh, I really love all these puppets because they're so easy to use. Um, a lot of the other things like shaker eggs, um, you can get those from just about any good music store, um, or you can make your own. Um, they, they make special kinds of like little like plastic kind of beads now that you could use to make shaker eggs. The NAEYC guidelines really frown upon us using food for making shakers. Um, it just sends a bad message to children whose family can't afford to buy rice or beans or pasta and we're using them to play with. So think about that a little bit. Um, we can, you know, go outside and get small pebbles or you know, sticks, um, little things, buttons, you know, and put them inside. Um, and up on my, the Brain Facts page, I do have some ideas of how to make shaker eggs and um, some steam activities that you can do with them as well. So I'm going to put on feeling faces, and um, it's a little bit more challenging with not being able to uh, sit down and access these as quickly as I like. So we're going to do this as best as we can, and smiling faces. Let's sing about different faces we make. You see how I feel when you look at my face. I smile, I frown, it's all there in one place. Look at these puppets, they show feelings too. Look at this face, what's it telling you? It's a smile. That means happy. Can you show me a happy face? Uh oh, uh oh. Look at this puppet. The face has a tear. There's also a frown. She said, Oh dear. Show me sad. See this puppet, the mouth's open wide. His eyes are chewing, he's shaking inside. He's scared. Scared. Show me scared. Show me scared. Now this twisted and the eyebrows are low. The feeling of anger is what this, this puppet, puppet to show. show. He's angry. Show me, Show me angry face. Looks to the side, the mouth's twisted too. Wants to talk but doesn't know what to do. She's shy. Show me a shy face. You've seen 
enough faces. Now here's what you do. Show me the face that fits on you. Which is your favorite? I like that face. It's you know, okay we all sometimes. Wear different to faces feel this all way, the right? time. But you know what? I like your face. And that is our Feeling Faces song. Um, when children can be made aware of their feelings at an earlier age, it makes it easier for them to deal with their feelings when they become teenagers. We have so many um, times when we spend hours with children talking about their feelings, Dr. Becky Bailey's feeling dolls, right? Um, there's so many out there. And um, I think that Kaplan has the feeling dolls and the, um, the pictures that you can show them of the different faces. Kaplan also has the Learn Every Day Infant Toddler Curriculum with, you know, work in there from Thomas More and um, oh, a lot of wonderful people. The music in that book is, is my music and some of these songs that you're hearing um, in this workshop. There's a lot of good things out there, resources for us, for infant toddlers. There didn't used to be as many as there are now, but there are a lot out there. So use them and also go with your gut instinct. If you're a parent, a grandparent, or someone that's had to care for other children, you understand what it feels like. And so you can help children to understand their feelings. Talk to them about it. And we do this a lot in early childhood. And then when they get older and they're in first, second grade, and that's what I mean, I don't mean real old, I mean just six or seven or eight, we start to tell them things like, there's no time for that right now, you're in math class. The earlier we teach them, about their feelings, connecting with them, and learning how to deal with them, control them, express them, the better they will be at it as they get older. I cannot stress that enough. So have a lot, of, there's a, a leaky books out that have all the different pictures and, and the children have to look at the picture, imitate the face, talk about the feeling. And if they do not have the vocabulary yet, you do the talking for them. You become the facilitator of them understanding it. And to end today's workshop, I want to do something I don't get to do when I'm on the road. Um, that is because it's hard to carry my guitar around. So I want to um, take my guitar and sing a song for you. There are some songs out there where the words are a little bit iffy. And we're thinking, and you know that, you know that I've taken Bunny Foo Foo and changed the words to where he learns how to hug and other things like that. When you start to sing the song and the words don't quite feel right, then don't sing it, you know? Um, just there are some things that have evolved over time and they were very appropriate for the use back then, but no longer appropriate now. So go with, the, go with your gut. If something feels right, you use it. If it doesn't, you might want to put it aside and think about what is it that makes it not feel comfortable for you. And can you change it so that you can still use it? Well, that's what I was feeling about um, the hush, little baby, don't say a word. Papa's going to buy you a mockingbird. And then what happens? Papa just keeps giving his baby gifts and gifts and gifts forever. And one thing doesn't work, that's okay, I'll buy you something else. But that's not what love is all about, is it? So I wanted to change the words. I also uh, changed Jack and Jill so they go up the hill to fetch water. And in my version, they find the water, they have a drink, and they skip back down together. Everything's fine. Nobody breaks any heads. All righty. So this is Hush Little Baby. All right. And this is my version of Hush Little Baby. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Papa's gonna buy you a mockingbird. If that mockingbird won't sing, 
Papa's gonna buy you a diamond ring. If that diamond ring won't shine, Papa's gonna tell you that's just fine. Cause all my little baby needs to know is Papa's gonna love you from head to toe. Yes, Papa's gonna love you from head to toe. Cause that's all a baby really needs to know. A baby needs to know they are loved. That is the most important thing. To hold a baby, you get the benefits of releasing endorphins that make them feel good. You release growth hormone growth hormones to help them grow. You re release serotonin to make them relax and feel good and dopamine for pleasure. And all those wonderful things happen. You're holding the baby and you're rocking the baby. Now, um, I have set up a Patreon page um, where I put up a lot of workshops and mini workshops. And there is something up there about the benefits of singing to a baby. Why do you sing to baby? How do you sing to baby? And one of the benefits besides the bonding is that they're getting the rhythm for language. So every little thing you do with the baby has a purpose. Every little thing, when you smile, when you touch them, when you sing with them, when you dance with them, all of those things help benefit the brain in one way or another. And nothing that you are doing with the baby that is positive um, would be hurtful. So I encourage all of you, please enjoy this time of the baby's life. And I'm going to get Mr. Froggy and just sing a little bit of a song for you for goodbye that I love to do with the babies. But instead of turning on the music, I'm just going to do it live and do a shortened version of it for our mini masterpieces. Remember that you can go to Facebook to Marianne Harmon or to Facebook Music with the Mayor's Brain Facts. I also try to keep a lot of videos for teachers on YouTube so that you can learn how to use these songs and so that it doesn't cost you anything to find these songs. We have the Wide Mouth Bullfrog there and many, many others. Um, I hope that we can stay connected and maybe you'll invite me to come and do a workshop for you, either virtually or in person when we're allowed. And lastly, I am doing Zoom concerts. So if any of you want to um, get in touch with me, we can have me come on in and sing to the children without actually being there. All righty, so here we go. This is the song, Take Your Little Hands. And we are going to go through a few little things with the children that could become a ritual for when you say goodbye. You know what? I am going to turn on the music. We have time for the whole thing to play. Here we go. You ready? You take your little hands and go clap, clap, clap. You take your little hands and go clap, clap, clap. You take your little hands and go clap, clap, clap. Clap, clap, clap your hands. Your arms ready. Arms. Hug. Hug, hug. A brazo! Oh, hug! I love hugs! Take your Mr. Froggy arms. wants to hug you! Whoa. Hug, 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 hug with your great feet. All right, arms. watch your belly. Gentle your fingers. Tickle, 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 tickle. You ready? Gentle fingers. Tickle, 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 tickle. Take your little fingers and go. Tickle, 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 tickle. You like it? Okay. Take your little lips. Try to give me a big kiss. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Kiss with your little lips. Ooh, ah. Take your little no, wave bye. Wave bye. See ya. Bye -bye. Say sayonara. Yasu. Namaste. Tai Chin. Shalom. You take your little hands and go clap, clap, clap. You take your little hands and go clap, clap, clap. Take your little hands and go clap, clap, clap. Clap, clap, clap your hands. Clap, clap, 
clap your hands. Okay, everybody. Thank you. I enjoyed being with you virtually. And I hope to see you soon. This is Mayor from Music with Mayor. Bye.